a spider crawling on me. Welcome and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be sharing my anticipated releases for the second half of the year. It is a little bit warm today in Denmark, so I do have my door and a window open. So if it's a little bit louder or if my hair is blowing beautifully in the wind, that is why. We'll see how it goes. So these are all the books that are being published in the second half of the year, so July onward. So there are a couple books at the very beginning here that have already come out, but I wanted to, it to be a sort of second half of the year anticipated releases. I do not necessarily think that I will get to all of these books, but they are books that I have my eye on. Okay, the first book that I have on this list came out already on July 6th, and that is Six Crimson Cranes by Elizabeth Lim. I'm sure you've heard about this one. A lot of people have been talking about it. This is the same author of the Spin the Dawn duology, which I did really enjoy. It was a little bit on the younger side for young adults, but this is a retelling of the Seven Swans or the Seven Swan Brothers story set in an Asian inspired world. So I'm really, really excited about it. The main character Shiori has magic in a world where magic is forbidden and she loses control of it one time and is seen by her evil stepmother who also has dark magic and she exiles Shiori and turns all of her brothers into cranes. This one I'll definitely be reading. I'm not sure when, I, when, when I'm going to get to it. I'm already on hold of the library, but I am on a very long wait list. The next book has already been released as well, and that one came out on July 13th, and it is Wings of Shadow by Nikki Palpreto. This is the third and final installment in the Crown of Feathers trilogy. This is a young adult fantasy series featuring Phoenix Riders. The first book has a little bit of a Mulan element to it. I cannot wait to find out how this series ends and to touch back in with Veronica, Tristan, and I forget the other guy's name. And so Nikki Palpreto is a Canadian author as well. So if you, like me, are looking for more Canadian authors, definitely check her out. The next book in July coming out on the 20th is These Hollow Vows by Lexi Ryan. This is a young adult fantasy and it is described as Cruel Prince meets Akatar. So it sounds like it's going to be really tropey, but I think it will also be fun. I think that this is going to be a book that I'm going to pick up when I'm in a specific mood for this type of book. I'll read a little bit of the synopsis here. From New York Times bestselling author Lexi Ryan, Cruel Prince meets A Court of Thorns and Roses in this sexy action-packed fantasy about a girl who is caught between two treacherous fairy courts and their dangerously seductive princes. Bree hates the Fae and refuses to have anything to do with them, even if that means starving on the street. But when her sister is sold to the sadistic king of the unseelie court to pay a debt, she'll do whatever it takes to get her back, including making a deal with the king himself to steal three magical relics from the Seelie court. Also on July 20th is She Who Became the Sun by Shelley Parker Chan. I follow Tor on Instagram and I have been anticipating this book for so long. I feel like they are constantly pushing and preparing, like marketing this book. I see everyone mention it on their anticipated releases. It is described as a Mulan meets the Song of Achilles. I haven't read a Song of Achilles, but all of the other things that are describing this book do sound really good. And I've heard that it is also a retelling of the origins of the Ming Dynasty set in a fantastical world. I think it will be fairly military based as well, but I'm actually okay with that. I, I think this sounds like a really cool concept. So it is uh, two siblings, one of whom the brother is given a really great prophecy or prediction of where his life is going. The girl, the sister is given nothing. Something happens. I think maybe the brother dies. Um, essentially the girl has to take over her brother's spot in the army. It becomes a badass warrior. My hopes are kind of up for this. I hope that it actually is really good. And then the last book coming out in July on July 27th is Red Wolf by Rachel Vincent. I have been seeing a lot of Red Riding Hood inspired retellings lately, which is really interesting. I think it's a nice shift away from Beauty and the Beast. This one I believe is a young adult fantasy and it is giving me really, really like red vibes from the show Once Upon a Time where the girl is actually the wolf. Let me read a bit of the synopsis here. For as long as 16 year old Adele can remember the village of Oakvale has been surrounded by the dark woods, a forest filled with terrible monsters that light cannot penetrate. Like every person who grows up in Oakvale, she has been told to steer clear of the woods unless absolutely necessary. 
But unlike her neighbors in Oakvale, Adele has a very good reason for going into the woods. Adele is one of a long line of guardians, women who are able to change into wolves and who are tasked with the job of protecting their village while never letting any of the villagers know of their existence. I think there's a little teensy bit of romance here, but not a ton. So I'm going to keep my eye out on this one. If anything, it sounds like it might be a really great, uh, dark, eerie, foresty fall book. The only book I have on this list coming out in August comes out on the 17th, and that is Redemptor by Jordan A. Fueco. This is the second book in the Ray Bear series. The first book is Ray Bear. I'm not sure if this is going to be a trilogy or a duology. I think it might actually be a duology, in which case this is the conclusion to the story. I read Ray Bear earlier this year and really enjoyed it. It is a young adult fantasy as well, set in an African-inspired world. And the main character is someone who is ordered by her her mother to kill the crown prince the ray bear but in order to do this she has to get really close to him and actually becomes a member of his interior council there is a very very strong found family element in the first book there's a big focus on feminism on cultural identity and diversity i thought it had a really interesting ending so i'm really excited to see where this one goes in the second book Okay, there's a few books coming out in September that I'm looking forward to. The first of which, the only contemporary that I have on this list is coming out on September 7th, and that is Beautiful World, Where Are You? by Sally Rooney. I am someone who absolutely loved normal people. Conversations with friends does not interest me as a concept, or I'm not interested in reading that book. So I am really interested to see where this book goes or how I feel about it. The synopsis is really vague, so you're welcome to check that out if you'd like. So I found a New York Times article that talks a little bit about the book, so I'll read that instead or a passage from that one. So it says um, that the characters in this book are older and the problems that occupy them are more global and entrenched. It centers on four characters, a novelist named Alice, her best friend Eileen, and their respective love interests. In conversations and email exchanges, the friends dissect their love lives and their fears about the future of the planet. So I think this sounds like it's going to be very introspective and very contemplative about the world, the state of the world. Although admittedly, the in conversations and email exchanges little snippet there makes me a little bit concerned. I have mixed feelings about books that are very like mixed media in structure. So hesitantly nervous about that aspect of the book, if that is the case, but I was okay with the lack of dialogue quotations in normal people. That didn't bother me there. So we'll see how this one goes. I am really curious to see how I will like another Sally Rooney book. Also coming out on September 7th is Among Thieves by MJ Kuhn. This one is described in the synopsis as fantasy debut, but there are some Goodreads reviewers who have tagged it under young adult, so I'm not sure what it technically is classified as. And this one is described as a heist-based book, perfect for fans of Six of Crows. You know that I loved Six of Crows. The Six of Crows reference does make me think that it might be young adult, but I'm not sure. I'll read you a little bit of the synopsis here. In just over a year's time, Rhea Cotella has already earned herself a reputation as the quickest, deadliest blade in the dockside city of Kerouac. Not to mention the sharpest tongue, but Rhea Catella is not her real name. For the past six years, a deadly secret has kept her in hiding. Forced to team up with a crew of assorted miscreants, smugglers, and thieves, Rhea must plan her next moves very carefully. If she succeeds, her freedom is won once and for all, but unfortunately for Rhea, her new allies are nearly as selfish as she is, and they all have plans of their own. So I do like ragtag groups of misfits coming together for a common goal. It is currently going to be a standalone, but I noticed the author on Goodreads said that she would love to return to this world. And that makes me feel like a second book is based on how successful this first book does for this debut author. So I hope that it's really great. I hope success for this author, and I will definitely keep an eye out to see what the reviews are like for this book as it comes out. Then there are two books coming out on September 28th, the first of which is The Last Graduate by Naomi Novik. This is the second book in the Scholomance series, the first of which was The Deadly... A uh, Deadly? A uh, Deadly Education. I actually really liked A Deadly Education, even though there are definitely, definitely flaws with it, and it is 
not going to be for everyone. I'm going to release a video closer to, like maybe at the beginning of September, about my thoughts on a deadly education and uh, should you or shouldn't you start this series. So stay tuned for that. The last book didn't necessarily end with a cliffhanger, but it ended with a one line that sort of blew up things and made me really excited for the next book. But I'm a little bit nervous about the timing of this book. The first book takes place in the span of about two or three weeks. The Last Graduate makes me feel like her graduating is going to be a big component of this book and it definitely like that's sort of what the synopsis sounds like. But if it's written in the same style as the first book, there's no way she's going to be able to get through a whole school year in one book. I don't want it to be completely different writing style from the first book, even though that's a lot of what people didn't like about this book. I kind of enjoyed it. So anyway, I'm, I'm, I'm excited, but also hesitantly nervous about what this book is going to shape out to be. If you haven't heard, A Deadly Education is about a witch or sorceress who is at a school where the school is not only sentient, but also kind of evil and actively trying to kill or like wean out the students. And the main character, Elle, begrudgingly befriends Orion. He is sort of the golden boy hero type. And she is actually predestined to become like the greatest dark sorceress ever, but she is actively trying to avoid turning evil. It is so humid. I'm sure it's not so humid. It's really humid for Denmark. I'm not used to this weather anymore. So if I look really sticky and gross, it's because I am. But we'll continue. The other book coming out on September 28th is Dark Rise by C.S. Passat. This is the same author that wrote the Captive Prince trilogy, which is a male-male historical fantasy. This is going to be a young adult fantasy book, which makes me... I'm interested, but also I'm not sure if it's going to be what it was I liked about the Captive Prince trilogy. That book definitely had really great smut. An, an okay plot. Dark Rise does not sound particularly new. It says that Dark Rise is a classic battle of good and evil in a world full of ambiguities, reversals, and twists where nothing is as it seems. And this is actually a fanta historical fantasy setting of 1890s London. I have not read a ton of like this time period historical fantasy in a really long time. I used to. This used to be right up my alley, but it's been a really long time. Okay, there are only a few in the late fall, early winter for 2021. In October, we have just two. On the 1st of October, we have The Goddess of Nothing at All. This is another North mythology retelling, and it is the story of Loki's second wife, Sigun. When it comes to Norse mythology stuff, I actually feel like this huge pressure to pronounce all of the <laughs> names and words correctly. In Danish, I feel like this would be pronounced Sigun. Any YouTube video that I found, it was pronounced Sigin, so I'm not certain. But I, if I read this book, I will ask a Dane and I will find out for you. This is described as a dark fantasy LGBTQA plus Norse mythology retelling from the eyes of Sigun. Loki's wife. It challenges the ideas of right and wrong, fate and choice, love and loyalty, and asks if we've been on the wrong side all along. This is also a debut author, and it is a Canadian author. Now I'm realizing that I haven't said the author's name, and that is Kat Rector. So this one really excites me, although if you know the story of Sigun, you know the ending. I don't, and I'm not going to look it up. Here's the synopsis for this one. Perhaps you know the myths. Furious, benevolent gods, a tree that binds nine realms, a hammer stronger than any weapon, and someday the end of everything. But few have heard of me. Looking back, it's easy to know what choices I might have made differently. At least it feels that way. Maybe I would never have let Loki cross my path, never have fallen in love. But there's no going back. We were happy once. And the price for that happiness was the end of everything. That sounds pretty good. I really like that style of storytelling where it's like always foreshadowing about oh what will come but I know that's not for everyone so this one I am really really excited and looking forward to. The only other book in October is coming out on the 5th 
and that is Little Thieves by Margaret Owen. I read Margaret Owen's Merciful Crow duology for the Olympics readathon in June and I thought they were really great. So I don't know a ton about this one. I will read the synopsis for you quick here as well. Once upon a time there was a horrible girl. Vanya Schmidt knows that no gift is freely given, not even a mother's love, and she's on the hook for one hell of a debt. Vanya, the adopted goddaughter of death and fortune, was, price, was Princess Gazelle's dutiful servant up until a year ago. That was when Vanya's otherworldly mothers demanded a terrible price for their care, and Vanya decided to steal her future back by stealing Giselle's life for herself. I'll leave it there. That sounds interesting. Coming out on November 2nd is A Marvelous Light by Freya Morska, and this one is described as red, white, and royal blue meets Jonathan Strange and Mr. Norrell in debut author Freya Morska's A Marvelous Light, featuring an Edwardian England full of magic contracts and conspiracies. So again, this is another sort of historical British fantasy which, as I've said before, isn't always what I'm in the mood for, but I am intrigued. I actually haven't read either Red, White, and Royal Blue or Doctor Strange and Mr. Norrell. I have a long history of almost buying Doctor Strange and Mr. Norrell from the bookstore, and it's always, for whatever reason, been like the book that I put back on the shelf at the last minute when I'm eyeing my basket and chapters. But this one sounds kind of interesting. Again, I'm not always in the mood, and I have not read a lot of this era of historical British retellings in a really long time, so I think I'll have to be in the right mood to read this one. But it sounds like our main character, Robin, is sort of accidentally in an administrative mix-up, is given the role of being an intermediary between the non-magical and magical worlds and his magical counterpart. I think there sounds like there's going to be like a hate to love male-male relationship in there, and I have heard that the relationship is a major plotline, not a subplot. And then the last book that I have down, the only book that I found in December, is coming out on December 9th, and that is The Liar's Knot by M.A. Carrick, the second book in the Rook and Rose series, the sequel to The Mask of Mirrors. If you have not watched any of my videos the last couple of months, The Mask of Mirrors was my favorite book of the year so far. We also just recently got a cover for that, so I'm excited to be able to put up the new cover. It's sort of like the same exact cover, except with red and gold instead of blue and gold. This is a new adult fantasy series. The first book actually has a complete story arc, and I saw that the authors have also said the second one will as well. So, so it sounds like it's going to be one of those series where there is sort of a separate story for each book with dangling threads and questions left at the end of each book. There were some really great reveals towards the end of The Mask of Mirrors, so I am so excited to see where that picks up and how that plays out in the second book. This is a series that is set in a sort of Venetian-inspired setting of a colonized city-state. First book followed mostly our main character, Ren, who is a con artist trying to worm her way into this noble family. But there are lots of other characters that we follow. And again, without going into spoilers, some of the reveals at the end of the first book are going to make the character dynamic so good. I can't wait. I can't wait for this book. Anyway, that is it for my anticipated releases for the remainder of this year. Are you planning to read any of the books that I've mentioned today? Let me know down below. Or if not, let me know what your most anticipated release for the second half of this year is. We'll see you next time. Thanks for joining today, everyone. Bye.